Once again, good morning, join us, Taj, and welcome to another Re- Wellness Wednesday webinar. So I'm Jalo Pohol, and I'm happy to be back again with you this morning. Last Wednesday, we had with us Ms. Joey Umandap from Ateneo Bulatao, who spoke about wellness tips on how we can make ourselves more selfless and compassionate given these difficult times. And for this morning, we will focus on the spiritual aspect of our wellness. More importantly, we will try to seek and find the Lord given our difficult uh, situation. And this morning, we are very blessed to have someone very familiar to us, no? a friend of ours, someone from within our group. Our speaker for this morning is the CEO for the Executive Management Unit. So, uh, join us, Taj. Let us all welcome Mr. Eduardo Mendoza. Good morning, Sir Eddie. Good morning, Jello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Joy Nostalgia. Happy to be here with you and happy to see that uh, this technology works. And uh, I pray that uh, we are all blessed today for coming here. Okay, this is a special day for all of you. And uh, although I'm sure uh, Jello and Joy and Mylene are concerned that not too many people are attending this webinar. Uh, I'm not concerned because even if there was only one person attending this seminar, I will be able to say, siguro mahal na mahal ka ng Panginoon kaya ka dinala ngayon dito. No? At ikaw lang dinala. So, uh, God loves you all and uh, uh, allow me to begin my little message. Okay. Um, I was asked to talk on the general theme of Christitude, you know, about being Christ-like in our work. And so in preparing for today, I actually prayed and sought inspiration about how to approach this subject. After all, there are nine elements or values that constitute Christitude, and minemorize ko pa yan. No? Uh, but honestly, I couldn't decide which of these nine values I would focus on. Each one of them is a big and very heavy topic, and one can actually develop an entire retreat just speaking on any one of these. And so you know what? I decided that I am not going to focus on any one of these values or behavioral qualities. Besides, marami na naman na magagaling na speaker na nagpaliwanag sa inyo kung ano-ano itong mga uh, values na ito. No, at kung paano magkaroon ito. So, instead of highlighting any one of these Christ-like qualities, I've decided to talk about the Christ of whose qualities we are trying to copy. I'd like to talk about the Christ of these qualities. You know, my belief is that unless, unless and until you have had an inward conviction to believe in Jesus as the risen Lord and have decided to make Him the Lord of your life, you will not be able to come to a genuine transformation such as what these list of values define. I'm sorry to say. And so, kung mamarapatin po ninyo, gusto ko sana ipakilala sa inyo ang aking Diyos. My objective is not to convince you to believe in the existence of God. Palagay ko naman na lahat tayong nakikinig ngayon ay naniniwala sa Diyos. No? I'm sorry, naniniwala na may Diyos. No? But I'm sorry, but even Satan believes that God exists. My goal today, therefore, is to get you to begin to take a hard look at the quality of your faith and the depth of your relationship with God and hopefully begin to desire to let God make a difference in your life. I repeat, even if you attend each and every one of these Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday sessions organized by the company, even if you are one of the speakers, or even if you sit in the panel, unless and until you have made an inward decision, or if I may borrow the Christ should term commitment, even if you have made a commitment, and unless you have made a commitment to make Jesus your personal Lord and Master, 
and you have denied all other gods, including your own ego, to be the rule of your life, then you will not be able to manifest any of these Christ-tude qualities in a genuine and authentic way. After all, Jesus is an all-or-nothing God, all-or-nothing. He says, apart from me, you can do nothing. That's what Jesus says. You know, if it was easy to be good, then we wouldn't need a Savior, would we, Jello? Yeah. And that is why Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. All things through Christ or nothing without Christ. Let me begin by sharing with you a video. I hope this technology works. Okay, time out. Okay, I hope you appreciate this short video. Um, it is in Thai, but there are uh, there are subscripts, so um, you will be able to hear it. พอที่เหมือนคนอื่นพอที่ได้ยินในสิ่งที่หนูอยากบอกYou understood it. I'm sorry that uh, subtitles were too small, but sana man nagets niyo. Okay. Does God care? I want to talk about the trustworthiness of God and help us answer the question: Does God care? You know, when you look at the skies on a clear, dark night and consider the size of the universe that God created, you will see what a great designer and creator God must truly be. You know, but sometimes 
thinking about God in that way tempts us to wonder whether we are worthy of his care. After all, who are we compared to who he is? And when you consider the billions of people living on earth, you would get tempted to wonder whether of all the people in the world, would he care about you personally? And then, when you see the poverty and suffering and pain, will you not be moved to ask this simple but heartbreaking question? Does God care? An author that I read spoke the obvious truth by saying, life is sometimes painful and often difficult. <laughs> o nga naman ano, ha? sometimes painful but often difficult. Today, we want to talk about the trustworthiness of God in the context of our suffering and adversity. You know, believe it or not, God speaks to us and reveals himself to us through our pains and suffering. Even Jesus himself states the same obvious truth. He says, in this world, you will have trouble. Grabe, sabi ni Jesus yan, ha? magkaka problema ka. Yan, no? Um, when I gave this message in a retreat before, you know, I had maybe about 250 participants. I did a blind survey, you know, I told everybody to close their eyes and uh, I would ask a question answerable by a yes or no and if the answer was yes, they would raise their hands. And so, I asked them, uh, sino sa inyo ang galing sa broken family? May magtataas. Sino sa inyo ang may problema na financial? Magtataas. Sino sa inyo ang uh, uh, may pinagdadasal o may dinadaanan na sakit? Magtataas. So, marami mga tanong. Ang, uh, I asked many kinds of different problems that I could imagine people would have. And for every single question, I, had, I would have more than 10, 15, 20 people raising their hands. Some people, I noticed, would raise their hands more than one time. So, marami silang problema. Okay. Now, um, I don't know about you, but thank God if today you do not have any problems. Okay? Or nothing serious like that. You know? But let me tell you this truth. Jesus says, magkaka problema ka. Yeah. And when we have problems and difficulties or when we suffer, our natural tendency is to remove the source of pain, deal with the causes, and sometimes, and especially when we are long-suffering, we want to understand and make sense of the suffering. Yeah. And all the while as we suffer, we experience an, an emotional storm of anxiety and worry and fear and discontentment. Uh, and then suffering steals our peace, our sense of balance, our sense of order and our hope. Okay? I mean, given today's modern problems like this pandemic, I can only imagine what people feel when they are in the clinic waiting to be tested because they learned that they were exposed to somebody who was positive with COVID. Puro takot ang nasa puso ng mga taong ganyan. No? And so, uh, with your permission, I'd like you to take a moment to reflect on what problem or what adversity or what suffering you are going through. Okay? Or that you might have gone through in the recent past. And let me suggest a simple system of thinking about your problems or maybe of classifying the kinds and causes of the problems that you're encountering. Now, whether your problems are simple discomforts like, for example, poor internet connection or something more serious like a loss of a job or maybe some long suffering like a pre-existing illness, we can sort out all of our problems in four different categories. Let me put your problems in their boxes. No? Um, let me see. Okay, four categories. First category. 
Uh, wait a minute. Okay. The first category. Okay. Uh, suffering, the kinds of sufferings that we endure because of the things we choose to do. Okay. The first kind of suffering is we've made a bad decision and we're paying for it. Okay. There's suffering there if you make bad decisions, you know. There are uh, laws of nature, you know, uh, that we disobey. Obviously, if you jump uh, from a 10-story building without any aid and you break your leg or you die, well, <laughs> that suffering is a consequence of a bad decision that you have made. Okay? Uh, for, if you gamble and you lose money, well, the loss of money and your poverty is a cause of a bad decision to gamble. And I might also add, sorry, if anybody is matamaan, wag magalit, no? Uh, kung magsisigarilyo ka, hindi mo mahinto ang paninigarilyo mo, at nagkaroon ka ng lung cancer, yung suffering mo sa lung cancer ay dahil sa pagsisigarilyo mo. Okay. Now, the question is, how do you move forward from problems like this? No? Okay. Uh, we have to know that... Uh, uh, when we violate important principles and laws, whether human laws or nature's laws or moral laws, you know, there will be consequences. And therefore, we will suffer those consequences. And we must know that God allows suffering so that we can learn our lesson and live in the right way. Okay? Um, and so, some choices that we make may be irreversible. For example, uh, a debilitating disease like lung cancer, hindi mo na mababawi yan Mag, pag naumpisa na yan. No? And so, these are the kinds of sufferings that fall under this category. Okay? How do we move forward? Well, if you have one of these problems because of a bad decision that you made, then obviously you need to repent and you need to change your ways. Okay? Maybe our situation will not change but then we will change. And that's important to God. You know, remember, God is more important in what you are becoming than in your situation. Okay? He's, more import he's more concerned with changing you than changing your situation. Okay? The second thing we can do, obviously, is to ask God for help. Para mabawasan ang kapighatian natin, para mabigyan tayo ng bagong pagkakataon, o para tayo ay baguhin niya. Okay? These are the things we can do when we endure suffering because of some wrong thing that we have done. Okay. Second, the second kind of suffering is when we make good decisions. The first one was bad decision, but here we make good decisions and still we encounter some kind of suffering. Okay. Suffering because of the good choices we make. For example, you give up your job because you choose to homeschool your child. So, bababa ang income ninyo, pero at least maaalagaan mo yung anak mo. No? O kung hindi, titiisin mo ang mahirap na boss dahil ayaw mo mawalan ng trabaho. The suffering because you choose. Okay? Now, we may accept suffering, difficulties, as a necessary price for a greater good. This is called a sacrifice. No? It's called a sacrifice. When a mother gives up her job and sacrifices that in favor of uh, taking care of the house and taking care of the children, then they suffer a uh, reduction in income, but it's a sacrifice for a greater good. Okay. Second, if you are sacrificing for a self-serving good para sa sarili mo lang, malamang hindi ka magtatagal sa suffering mo. Babaguhin mo din ang pangyayari mo. No? Okay. Aalis ka dyan. Wala kang tenacity. No? Now, if you're suffering for someone else's greater good, then it is likely that you can endure extreme suffering, even until death. Okay? And lastly, suffering, while doing good to others, gives us a reason to turn to God and not to our own strength. And God would just be so happy to help you get out of that suffering because you're doing what he wants you to do. Okay? Third, the third kind of suffering. These are the last two categories of sufferings are sufferings that have nothing to do with your own choices. But kumbaga, these are the no choice sufferings. So 
the third kind of suffering is uh, uh, because of decisions of or actions of other people that have a negative effect on us okay so this kind of the, the second suffering was a decision that we make and there we make suffer now here in this third kind of suffering it's a suffering because of something that somebody else has decided to do whether it's a good thing or a bad thing okay uh, but na affect on ka negatively okay this is what uh, lawyers call force majeure sufferings no uh, uh, for example you get laid off because your company is downsizing it may be a good decision to downsize pero ikaw ang naapektuhan no so you suffer from the decision to downsize or like today you have to work from home because the company decides to lock down the building for disinfection medyo na inconvenience ka dahil may nagdesisyon na hindi ka pwedeng pumasok okay uh, many years ago my younger sister in america she broke her leg because a speeding driver was beating the red line and crashed into her car suffering uh, kasalanan ng ibang tao walang kamalamahan ng kapatid ko siya ang nagbayad sa kasalanan ng ibang tao okay. the fourth kind of suffering ay yung suffering na basta na lang nangyari because of no apparent reason basta na lang nangyari um, a dear friend of mine somebody in my bible study group mag-asawa sila uh, the wife was pregnant with their second child and uh, after a few visits to the doctor they discovered the good news that they were having twins no the ansaya saya now when uh, the mother gave birth on the day of the, uh, the delivery no on the week no two days before the mother gave birth the husband lost his job okay so medyo suffering na yan okay anyway they were excited that the baby was coming no and uh, let's set aside the worry that uh, magkakaroon na ako ng kambal na anak by the way kambal pala nalaman nila no ha na magkakaroon na ako ng kambal kambal na anak wala pa naman akong trabaho no? anyway sa awa ng Dios nung lumabas yung unang kambal babae maganda ang ganda ganda ng babae no? yung susunod na kambal na lumabas lalaki may sakit yung lalaki yung batang lalaki mula nung pinanganak ay may congenital problem no? he could not swallow he would have epileptic seizures every 10 minutes yun basta na lang nangyari no? uh, the victims of the Yolanda typhoon basta na lang nangyari no? okay. you know these kinds of problems that happen to us nang basta na lang without any cause without any prompting okay this is not just force majeure this is called force de use no? lawyers refer to them as acts of god para ang pangit ano pero wala eh no uh, not that we're blaming god no but i will explain to you a little bit later what this whole try to make sense out of this whole thing no? now in both of these cases number three and number four okay we consider ourselves as victims of suffering that we don't deserve you know? we are the victims here no and especially if this is long suffering you know, we reach the point where we ask the question why why me why lord and we we call on god if we could call on god and we say lord don't you care okay. now this is the point of talking about the suffering that is very difficult you know? it's very difficult for me to talk about suffering for anyone you know? especially when that one speaking namely myself is not the one suffering you know? some of you may going may be going through a long standing problem that doesn't seem to have a solution and you continue to suffer maybe you've learned to live with it 
but nevertheless, the pain remains. And it's just amazing that you are not giving up. Okay? Or you could be in extreme mental anguish. You think of your problem from the moment you wake up all the way until you fall dead, tired asleep. Okay. Or sometimes when you go through this life, you know, you just grab whatever opportunity you can to escape from your problems, to stop thinking about it, but then it will keep coming back. Now, what real comfort can I give you other than a listening ear, a compassionate gesture, and the good news of Jesus himself? Okay. Um, there's a story in the Gospel of John about a man who was invalid for 38 years. An invalid for 38 years. He lay by the side of the pool of Bethesda in Jerusalem, waiting for the water to be stirred up. I think for some of you, many of you, this is a familiar story. Apparently, it was the belief of people at that time that kung sino ang unang uh, pumasok sa tubig, pag gumalaw yung tubig, sabi nila, ginalaw na anghel, no? kung sino na una, ay siya ang gagaling. He would be made well from whatever disease with which he was afflicted. You know, when I read this story, and I read it again, and I reflected on it, my first reaction was to admire that invalid's tenacity and hopefulness. You know, tenacity again. You know? Imagine, 38 years invalid. Now, I don't know if he had been waiting there all those 38 years, but I can imagine how much he really wanted to be healed. No? Hindi, na niya, hindi na siya umalis dyan. Dyan na siya natira. Siguro noong umpisa, may mga kaibigan siya nagbibisita sa kanya. Pero after the years went on, mag-isa na lang siya. Kaya, eto na siya. No? Now, pero matyaga pa rin siya. No? But you know, when I read further this story, medyo nalungkot ako noong, nabali, na, noong naisip ko noong nangyari. You know, as the story goes, a man approached this invalid and asked him, Do you want to get well? Gusto mo bang gumaling? And the invalid's reply was, Sir, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. And then I have to wait again. Look at this. Here was a man, he is trapped in his disability. Wala siya magawa. Gusto niyang gumaling. He liked to be healed, but he knew that there was no chance he would be able to be healed. I want to, but I can't see it happening. It's just not possible. So you can almost feel his frustration, his surrender, his despair. And so I think, what a sad and hopeless man he was. Of course, it turns out that the man who was speaking to this invalid was Jesus. And the invalid had no idea that this was Jesus, the great healer. Of course, we all know what happened after that because Jesus proceeded to heal the invalid without delay. You know, if you read the Gospels, you will hear, read that Jesus healed many, many, many people. In fact, there would be stories where the entire village would come to his house and they would crowd it because they bring the sick people, you know. So in almost all of these instances with Jesus healed people, usually these people came to Jesus or were brought to him by others for healing. But here, in this story of the paralytic, this is one of those rare moments when Jesus himself approaches the hopeless and he extends loving care. Hindi pa siya tinatanong, nilapitan na niya. So again, does God care? Does God love you? Now, of course God cares. God loves you. If only you knew. 
No? But the question is, how do you know that God loves you? How do you know that God loves you? I mean, sorry, huh? I mean, I, I don't mean to rub salt on your wounds, okay? But I want you to appreciate what I'm trying to lead up here, okay? I have a suspicion, okay? That for those of us who feel like kulang ng pagmamahal ang Panginoon o hindi sila napapansin, I have a suspicion that sometimes we define the way we are loved by what we want and what we get from the one who loves us. You know, we measure the love of a person for us by what we want and what we get from that person. You know, it's like that often. We use people and we're happy when they do what pleases us. Diba? We want to be loved, but we want a specific way for the love to be showed to us. You know, someone made a lot of money with a book that he wrote entitled The Five Love Languages of Love. According to this book, which is very popular, we also love depending on how we want to be loved. So, ko ano ang love language natin, yun din ang language natin ng pagmamahal sa ibang tao. No? Sometimes, we would feel unloved because the other person who actually loves us does not speak our love language. Do you agree? Do you agree with this? No? Ganun talaga yun. No? Ganun talaga tayo. We define the way we are loved by others uh, by what pleases us personally. No? Kung anong gusto natin at naibigay, ayun, feel natin na mahal tayo. And we love others in the same way that we, want, we ourselves want to be loved. And this is true, I believe, of anyone who loves us, whether it is our parents, our brothers or sisters, our children, our spouse, our friends. This is the way it is, no? And even the way we want God to love us, we define the way we want to be loved. Okay? And so, does God love you? No? Okay, tell me, how do you know God loves you? No? How do you know God loves you? Okay. Many times, we hear people jump with joy when they receive a blessing and say, wow, God loves me indeed, no? Diba? I bet if you won the lotto right now, kung meron pan lotto, ayaw ko lang, no? If you won the lotto right now, the first thing that you will say is, God loves me. No? Natural yan, siyempre, no? Minsan, meron kaming uh, prayer meeting, no? Ng grupo ko, no? It, this was after Easter, and, uh, and, uh, ang theme namin ay, you know, I have seen the Lord. And so I was leading the prayer meeting and I invited people to come to the front and share, take the mic and share God's blessings to them. Naku, ang daming tuwan-tuwa sa mga nagbabago sa buhay nila. Okay, if He heals your sickness, napagaling niya ang katawan mo, natanggal ang cancer, gumaling ang pilay mo, nag-negative ka sa swab test mo, wow, galing, praise God, mahal ako ng Diyos, no? Or if you get a good job offer from a company that you like, thank you, Lord. No? Feeling ninyo, siyempre, mahal na mahal kayo ng Panginoon. At sinagot niya ang mga panalangin ninyo. I mean, sino ba ang may ayaw niyan? No? Pero ang tanong, paano yan kung di ikaw ang nanalo sa loto? Ano naman ang sasabihin mo? Paano kung hindi ka gumaling at lumala pa ang sakit mo? Paano kung namatay ang mahal mo. Paano kung hindi, mo naka, hindi ka nakahanap ng trabaho agad? No? O di kaya, paano kung ikaw ay natanggalan ng trabaho? Wow! Mahal ako ni Lord. Ganun ba rin ba ang sasabihin natin? Uh, yes, it would be best if we can bring ourselves to know God and to know that God loves us even if we're going through deep problems. Yeah, that would be best. But the reason I'm saying this is because I want us to realize that sometimes, if we're honest, we get confused by God's love because of the way we define how we want to be loved. Paano ba natin talaga matitiyak na minamahal tayo ng Diyos? Mahirap ba siyang intindihin? O mahirap lang tayong 
pasiyahin. Is God so hard to understand or are we just hard to please? Of course, the answer is yes on both of these questions. God is hard to understand. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts, as the Bible says. And that's the truth. And that's why only those who commit themselves to want to know more about God deeply and more personally are the ones who are able to live in peace even though they walk through the valley of the shadow of death. At the end of this message, I will give you a story that, uh, that uh, pertains to that. Okay? Now, let me move very quickly here. Okay? My dear colleagues, you are here this morning because God loves you and he invites you into a personal relationship with him. Earlier, I quoted Jesus saying, in this world, you will have trouble. Well, I want you to remember that Jesus also said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Okay? Magkaka problema ka, pero wag mong problemahin, sabi ni Jesus. No? Believe in God, believe also in me. What is he saying? Jesus says, magtiwala kayo sa akin. Trust me. Trust me. Okay? So, can God be trusted? Yes, of course God can be trusted. He's absolutely trustworthy. But the question is, will you trust him? even when you're in the middle of a leaking boat in a storm. Now, even if I tell you that God loves you, how can you really be sure that God loves you? How can you trust Him that He will take care of you? Trust. That's the big word. Okay? That's the key to being at peace, isn't it? Okay? Even if we're in the middle of a storm, in the open sea, we can be at peace if we trust the captain of the boat, right? So the question is, do you trust that God loves you? Do you trust that God will take care of you? Okay. Trusting God, in my opinion, is actually more difficult than obeying God. True. I've observed this in myself. I've observed this in many people. Seriously, trusting God is harder than obeying God. And I bet you this is true for you too. You know, you can obey God and not commit any sin. But the moment you experience some serious problem, and then you start worrying, you start being afraid, you become anxious, you become this, this desperate. Even when you know that God loves you and God will take care of you, but you're worried and you're fearful and anxious, then it shows that you don't trust God. Simply lang. You know, I don't blame you. It's hard to trust someone you do not know. Okay? So I cannot blame you for being anxious when you have problems, either because you've forgotten who God is or kulang ang pag-aalam ninyo tungkol sa Panginoon. But you know, the good news is you can grow in trust. You can grow in trust. That's why I urge you to spend more time to know God and to let Him reveal Himself to you. And you know what? Today, I will tell you three things that you should know about God that will make a big difference in your level of trust in Him and that will give you peace beyond understanding. Three things about God that will bring peace beyond understanding even when you're walking through a storm. So what is it? What is it about God that makes Him absolutely trustworthy? Okay. I said there are three things, but actually... Uh, I can give an entire three-day retreat on just these three truths. No? Pero, konti na lang oras natin. At anyway, matalino naman kayo. At marami pa naman tayong pagkakataon na magkita tuwing lunes, miyerkules, o biyernes. Baka makachamba ulit ng slot at pwede ko pang dagdagan ang inyong kaalaman. No? Sa bagay, may open forum tayo mamaya. Sana may oras pa, no? So baka yung mga panelist, sila na mismo ang magpaliwanag sa inyo nitong ipapaliwanag ko sa inyo na medyo abbreviated version. Okay? So what are these three truths about our trustworthy God? Okay. Truth number one, God is sovereign. A very complicated, but I can simplify this. It means He is in complete control of everything. 
everything that goes on in this entire universe, God is in complete control. The Bible says God has the power to sustain and keep everything going. Every single star is held in place and every planet that orbits every single star is in the exact precise location where God has placed it. And not a single leaf in your garden will fall down to the ground unless God allows it. And our own plans can only happen if God allows it. All occasions of pain and suffering and sorrow are under the complete and absolute control of God. Even Satan, even Satan cannot move without God's permission. You know, God owns everything and he rules everything. And there are no surprises with God. And no one, no one, absolutely no one can thwart his plans. Kung naisip niyang gawin, gagawin niya at mangyayari. Nothing is impossible with God. And nothing is possible without God. You know, we've heard people say that no problem is bigger than God. Well, this is because God is sovereign. He can solve whatever problem we throw to Him. No? This pandemic, Jesus Maria said, the Bible is filled with stories of pestilence, of disease, and so on. God would allow this to happen overnight, and just like that, He would also remove it. God is powerful and in control, and that's what it means when we say truth number one, God is sovereign. Now, truth number two. Imagine someone who is so strong and powerful, like number one says, and he has lots and lots of resources at his command, okay? Like maybe the president of a country, ayan, ano? But if that person, no matter how powerful he is and how many resources he is, but if he's unable to make the correct decisions, then I'd be scared of that person. I wouldn't trust him. Okay? But truth number two says, God is perfect in his wisdom. Pare, hindi siya nagkakamali. No? God is infinitely wise. He has a plan for everything and his ways are not our ways and no human genius can ever come close to the wisdom and knowledge of God. You know, that's very, very, very comforting to know that God is not only truth number one, powerful, and he can make things happen, but truth number two, he's full of wisdom. He's perfect. Whatever he does with his power is never, ever a mistake. Okay? So, umaangat na ba ang trust ninyo, ang pagtiwala niyo sa Panginoon? Kulang pa yan. Kasi, if we had a mighty being who never made mistakes and who can execute all his plans flawlessly, but if that being had no good intentions, kawawang bata tayo. I would super be frightened of him. But the third truth is, God is good. Okay. This third truth completes the essence of the trustworthiness of God. God is good good. He is good to you and to me and to everybody. He loves us unconditionally. We are His children. The Bible says God is love. His love is abundant and it's abundant in His goodness and His love is everlasting. Walang kupas yan. Hindi siya magkukulang ng pagmamahal. Yun. Yun ang tatlong araw na retreat. All in. Okay? So there you have it, my dear colleagues. The three truths about God that will guarantee us peace as we place our trust in Him. Number one, God is in control. Number two, God does not make mistakes. Number three, God is all loving. And by the way, in case you do not know, there is nothing and no one and no God like Him. Siya lang po. Okay? And this truth summarizes it all for us when the Bible says, and we know that in all things, in 
all things, kahit anong mangyari sa iyo, kahit anong dinadaanan mo, in all things, God works for the good of those who love God and who are called according to His purpose. Let me end with another story from the Gospels. Earlier, we talked about the hopelessness of the paralytic who did not know Jesus. I hope you remember that. No? We saw that Jesus cared for him and approached him. Okay? Now, the other story is this. It's found in Luke chapter 18. We hear the story, this time, of a blind man named Bartimaeus. <clears throat> um, by the way, uh, Bible scholars would say Bartimaeus was born blind. So can you imagine? Is he paralytic, 38 years paralyzed? Ito si Bartimaeus, mula nung pinanganak, ay bulag na. So here we see him in Luke chapter 18, begging along the busy main street of Jericho. By the way, Jericho is a, uh, a progressive town on a major crossroad between Galilee and Jerusalem. Okay? Many pilgrims who go to Jerusalem every year coming from Galilee would pass through Jericho. Kumbaga, gitna uh, yan. On this particular occasion of our story, the blind Bartimaeus napansin niya na may kumikilos at may konting gulo. No, he senses a lot of movement and he can hear an unusually large number of people passing by. Of course, because he's blind, mas matalas ang kanyang paddinig. No? And he's sensitive about these things because he's at risk. Baka kung anong nangyari, madaganan siya, magka-stampede, o kung ano man. No? So medyo kinabahan siya. No? So he wants to make sure He's out of the way. So he asks, what's happening? Oh, what's going on? You know? And somebody says, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Now, observe the response of this blind Bartimaeus. The moment he hears that Jesus is passing by. Immediately, he calls out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Sinigaw niya yan. Hindi siya nahiya. And he repeats it each time louder and louder. Jesus, son of David. Hey, Jesus. You know? So much so that some of the people near Jesus and near the blind man are annoyed and tell him to be quiet. But this Bartimaeus, hindi siya magpapapigil. Lalo na yung nilakasan ng boses niya. Son of David, have mercy on me. What's going on here? No? What's going on here? Ganito ang pagbasa ko nito. Bartimaeus is probably not unaware of the news about Jesus. Palagay ko alam niya tungkol kay Jesus. Kasi doon siya nakatira sa Jericho. No? After all, nakatira siya dyan at maraming mga passerby na dumadaan dyan, nagchichismis, nagchichikahan, at narinig niya. No? Okay? At marami siyang nababalitaan. Kahit bulag siya, alam niya kung anong naririnig niya. Katulad ng mga kwento, mga chismis, mga gossip, mga latest happenings. No? And napipick up nito sa mga bumabiyahe dyan. No? In due course, he probably picked up some news that somewhere in the province of Galilee, there is a man named Jesus, a prophet, a healer. Nanggagaling daw siya. He was famous in Galilee. He healed lepers. He made the lame people walk. He made the deaf hear. And he made the blind see. The blind see. As soon as he learns that Jesus healed the blind, Bartimaeus is filled with hope. And he's confident that one day, Jesus will go to Jerusalem and doon siya dadaan sa Jericho. Kaya tumaas ang pag-asa niya. Bartimaeus knew that it's a matter of time that one day Jesus will pass here. And so he hopes and he waits and he positions himself strategically so that he will be there if and when Jesus passes by. E kaya tuloy, when finally at last, when he hears that it's Jesus who passes by, he makes absolutely sure that he gets the attention of Jesus his hope has finally arrived and he will not let it pass. Pagkakataon ko na ito, 
This is the moment I have been waiting for. And so he shouts, Jesus! Jesus calls Bartimaeus over to him. And Jesus asks him, What do you want me to do for you? And with a sigh of great relief, Bartimaeus says, Lord, I want to see. I want us to see the contrast between these two men. The invalid who didn't know about Jesus and who was hopeless. And the blind man who knew about Jesus and was long waiting for his arrival. Contrast their disposition and their view of their future before Jesus healed them. The invalid, he was hopeless. He would wake up each day not expecting anything particular or spectacular. He just wanted the day to end. And kung sakaling gumalaw yung tubig, alam naman niya na hindi din siya aabot. On the other hand, si Bartimaeus was full of hope. Hindi siya nawalan ng pag-asa dahil may balita siya na si Jesus ay nanggagaling. He knew that each day would bring him closer to the time when Jesus would come. He knew that it was just a matter of time. He waited patiently and with expectant hope. And even though he could not see and he was poor, he was, not, he was at peace. He was not an, he, although he was an outcast and a beggar, there was nothing that he could possibly do to turn his life around. He knew and he had hope. Ever since he learned about Jesus and the saving power of Jesus, he had hope. No longer did he curse the darkness. No longer did he wallow in self-pity. Instead, it was that hope in the coming of Jesus that allowed him to live through each day at peace, even though he was blind. So, my dear colleagues, what should you do? What should we do? It's good to reflect on the contrasts between the lives of these two invalids and to consider what contributed to the peace and the hope of Bartimaeus. I believe that there's a lesson here that God wants us to learn. For those of us who already know Jesus and, who, and we meet daily and we encounter people who are silently suffering and bearing the burden of an uncertain and hopeless future. You know, people need to know what Jesus can and will do. And so in conclusion, my dear colleagues, God, you know, cares for you. He knows what troubles you are in. He knows what troubles you will soon face. He also knows that you're not alone. I hope this small message has encouraged you and has opened your heart to accept the invitation of Jesus to follow him and to share the good news to others about his love and his trustworthiness. May you be blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Join us, Taj. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Eddie, for your very meaningful webinar you know, and talk. Well, you know what personally what struck me was that uh, lahat tayo, we have our own expected love languages diba? and sometimes yeah. if the person uh, does not speak the same language we tend to misinterpret diba? and yes. all of us have our problems our own problems and sometimes or oftentimes the Lord would use our problems to communicate something very important to us and more often Absolutely. than not yeah he would use our problems to Show us the more important things in life. Family, relationships, right? our call to love and to serve. Those most important things in life. And so once again, Sir Eddie, thank you for your talk. No? And at this point, I'd You're like welcome. to welcome our panelists. Uh, panelists, <clears throat> turn on your videos and your audios. And I'd like to also welcome my, uh, my partner, uh, Sir Alfie Miras. No? Uh, Sir Alfie, Alfie is the Vice President for Business Development and Market Operations in oh, okay. the Energy oh, okay. Development okay. Unit. Okay. So good morning, Alfie. Sir Alfie. Mag-meeting tayo sa araw. Kailangan paliwarag mo sa akin yung unit ito, ha? 
<laughs> Trabaho <laughs> pero gusapan. <laughs> so so good morning, uh, good morning everyone uh, join us in our group. Uh, good morning Sir Eddie. Uh, Jello. Um um actually I, I like the talk um napapanahon to in our situation right now. Um especially since uh, we really don't know as of probably as of this moment saan ba tayo pupunta no? Um and one plan on just uh, what's the god plan uh, um mm-hmm. in, in this pandemic. And then probably to 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 share my my thought. Um I I'll probably start with uh, um what what I think is a natural human behavior no. Um we people always try to rationalize things, rationalize things that happen to us. Mm. And uh, in that rationalization um if for example the things that happen to us is not favorable we always find something to blame. Mm, it could yes. be someone, it could be God if they if if they believe but I I think believing in God is one way to rationalize what's happening no. But mm. what uh, Sir Eddie mentioned is true that if 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 we if we want to believe it has to be hundred percent belief, mm. hindi hindi partial, because mm. us as a person, as I mentioned, we always try try to rationalize. If there's certain percentage of uh, disbelief, bahag gamitin pa natin yon to as a way to, you know, to justify or to blame someone or probably blame God on what's happening to us. <clears throat> and it's also good that, ano, no, that instead of discussing all of the nine elements, uh, Sir Eddie uh, is right to mention that what we, why would, why, why would we just ano, lang, uh, discuss ano, yung model natin on, on these nine values, which is uh, Christ. Mm-hmm. It's very, mm-hmm. very true. No? <clears throat> and then he also shared uh, a video about uh, a different dad and, and, her, uh, and his uh, um, daughter. daughter and i think ang nakita ko doon is like parang it's like daughter is tayo and god is yung father no that the father mm-hmm. truly cares uh he does everything to show his love and to, in in care for mm-hmm. his daughter but the daughter probably because hindi niya naintindihan yung father niya um hindi niya naintindihan lahat yung 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 gustong iparamdam ng ng father niya and it's hard for her to rationalize and to justify sa paligid niya yung nangyayari and at the end of the day um, she she tried to to kill herself her life. but oh. even at that time no uh, her father be- become more still understanding and even at that time willing siya to sacrifice himself just to save uh, her daughter so yeah understanding loving that that's really uh, the very nature of, of of our god no and then um um sir eddie also mentioned the um the four kinds of suffering and i think the first two uh, the one because of our poor decision and the one because of good decision i think if we are if we people are are good in rational rationalize things that's happening to us that's easy to rationalize if if maling ginawa mo of course you have to suffer with that if tama you can sacrifice. view that as as a sacrifice which is good really good no uh, i think that's uh, uh one of the mantra of our heroes no uh, they sacrifice uh, themselves including their, their life no our frontliners there they're sacrificing yes. their lives for not, not for themselves no but Kaling. but basically for <clears throat> for for all the people, all the people. Uh, that might be affected by this virus but in that for suffering i think we think uh, in sir, as sir Ed, Ed mentioned the, the the real uh, it, it's really hard to rationalize yung no choice wala nangyari nandiyan eh walang kasal- then, walang may kasalanan oh. walang may kasalanan and then yung basta nangyari na lang and I, I think everyone who has experienced this now i myself experienced that but um again because of uh, of uh, of our faith uh, i try to ano eh, to to connect that into rationalizing no i always think that na kapag nangyayari doon is that this thing happen for a reason. Yes. We don't know it yet now, but we know that God has a reason for that. Kung bakit hinayaan niya mangyari yan. And mm-hmm. if you believe, if you subscribe to that belief, of course, don't expect that God will always save you. No? Um, mm-hmm. For sure, because He's sovereign, His wisdom is perfect, but still He loves us. 
there's a reason for that. Probably hindi pa lang natin alam for now. Mm-hmm. And for sure, kung ano man yung ano, reason na yan, magamit natin yan sa future. So probably, I don't know, maybe he just want us to learn out of that experience, out of that challenge for us to prepare for uh, a more challenging uh, um, yes. uh, thing that would happen in the future. No? Yes. And on, on my personal side, on my, uh, personally, that happens to me. No? I, I experience uh, um, a bad, uh, um, uh, my, 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 my nephew actually uh, suffered from uh, uh, heart disease and then medyo, syempre, I care for, uh, for him mm-hmm. because an anak siya ng kapatid ko. And then before that, that time is my first time to encounter that kind of ano, no, a very challenging mm. situation. Hanggang mm. isip ko rin yun eh. Ano bang, ano bang plano ng Diyos dito? Uh, ano, ano gusto niya mangyari? But again, hindi ko maisip kung ano. I just thought that there's a reason for this. And true enough, no? After five years, ang sumunod naman na nagkaroon ng, ano, ng health problems is oh, oh my, my father. And no because kidding. of that, oh my God. because of that experience, alam ko na kung anong gagawin. Alam ko na kung mm. anong... Uh, Mm. Yeah, choice ng hospital pupuntahan. Alam ko na mm. kung ano yung mga kailangan gawin. And because of that, again, mahirap, challenging. Nalampasan ko yung ano, yung far greater challenge na yun. So, I, I think I'm, I'm just sharing that, no? That, um, mm. again, it's we person, we are rationalized person. We try we always try to rationalize things. Sometimes it's hard for us to rationalize. Let's just think that there's a reason for that. And mm. God knows what, uh, what He is doing. Yes. So um that's uh, basically my my thought on that no. Uh um Alfie. Yeah, and um probably my colleagues here no uh, which I will go to introduce can can also share the, the, the thoughts on this now. First I would like to introduce uh, uh Mr. Um, Roger Villa. Uh he is the engineer Roger. management group head. And also <clears throat> um probably so na natin no. Um the next one is Aldwin Ligarte, the design mm-hmm. management architect. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we used to have, uh, we're supposed to have Dixon Trejano of a property oh. management uh, officer, but I think uh, he has a, a very um, Testing. Uh, urgent matter to, <laughs> to attend. Uh, so, sabi niya, baka next time na lang. Uh, but uh, it's oh. a good opportunity, sabi niya, to, to attend on this. But nga, because of that situation, baka hindi siya And then the last one is uh, Miss uh, Finelia Corpus, our Jurnostag Foundation. Uh, project uh, assistant. So probably uh, we can start with the Sir Roger Villa, Sir. Roger. Hi, Good Sir morning, Roger. everyone. Good morning, Sir Eddie. Good Jello. morning, Roger. Thank you, LP and Aldwin and Fenelia. Uh, Good morning, Sir. I uh, take the opportunity to thank uh, Jello and uh, Miss Joy for inviting me for this uh, morning Wednesday morning webinar. No. And uh, napakaganda yung webinar ni Sir Eddie Mendoza. Very meaningful. Very meaningful. So what yeah. struck, struck me most was uh, actually it's the title of his uh, talk. No? Does God care? So yun yung uh, parang nagano sa akin, uh, tumama. Does God care when tragedy, tragedy sweeps in yung biglaan sa atin? So, mm, mm, so mm. if you allow me, I just want to share my uh, own experience recently. Yes, good. Yes. Uh, and uh, I think this is already an open uh, to uh, join us as this group. So I was uh, contracted the disease of uh, novel coronavirus, COVID-19. So I just want to to share how it happened and uh, uh, how how I went through from that uh, day up to uh, up to now where I uh, already uh, healed. So initially, that uh, the very week that I I don't have any any uh, symptoms. So it's actually uh, a week before that. It's just my daughter who who said that she will go for a test. Uh, so to those of you, uh, my daughter is uh, working in, uh, she is a medical practitioner and she's working with uh, oh. a company in Makati. So <clears throat> she said that she will go undergo tests, she will schedule herself. But uh, the weekend 
that weekend, it did not happen. There's, there are so many patients that she did to attend to. So the morning of July 6, uh, it's just wala. Wala naman ako nararamdaman. And I had a meeting with uh, all these executives in the in PDU, uh, together with all the uh, construction uh, managers, site managers, sa office. So that day, uh, biglang nagbago yung temperature. So, mm. ganun kabilis ako. Kasi aram, alam ko, pag tinaman ako ng sipon, ubo, mabilis akong tamahan. And uh, I, I just feel na para akong giniginaw. And I stayed in the office for the, until night. And uh, that night when I arrived home, I feel uh, the cold and the cough. The cough is there. It's uh, dry. So my daughter told me, okay, instead of me, ikaw na lang schedule for test. So ako na yun nauna. So she did everything. She did the scheduling. And I had the test Thursday. The result came out the sun following Sunday. So I didn't ko yon pinalam sa aking family. Uh, natanggap ko yung notification ng 10:30. I uh, printed the result, but I did not uh, disclose to my family first. So kumain mo na kami ng tanghalian. So Bahamang kumakain, hindi siya ko paano ko simulan. How I will uh, tell them. Kasi kasama ko sila lagi pag kumain. Although meron kami sa, within the house, meron kami sariling uh, ano, uh, social distancing na nangyayari. But, uh, so pinatapos ko muna yun pagkain. Then natapos kami kumain. And that's the time I uh, open. And I told them, I got the result, and I'm positive. So, everybody, anatahimik, walang walang nagbagsalita, and then it's just biglang nagdisperse yung mga aking mga anak. So, kami lang ng misses ko na iwan sa dining table, and so we just talk isang oras siguro, and then wala na kami kasama kami lang, and then my daughter came up after came down after one hour and she told me I'll test you and then we go to the hospital that's what she told me and then right there we go the, we go to the hospital and uh, uh, luckily we, I, we have we found out one in Laguna open so the, 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 the hardest part of me being to have a decision when the, the doctors told me we will uh, kailangan kang makonfine after all the, 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 the uh, tests and uh, lab that they happened, they told me that kailangan mong makonfine. Sabi ko, why? Eh, kailangan mo na makonfine, kailangan ka namin uh, mamonitor. So, yung decision ko doon, sabi ko sa doctor, doctor uh, doc, pwede ba bigyan mo ako muna ng uh, time? Uh, mapag-isa lang. Uh, so inisip ko kasi in sarili ko and then family how how, how binabalance ko uh, if hindi ako magpa-confine mahahawa yung family ko pagkasama ko sila kung magpa-confine ako what will happen to me para nandoon yung ano eh nandoon yung resistance ko na magpa-confine talaga nung una and uh, suddenly i said okay mas maganda na sarili ko na lang yung isolate ko and then my family will be spared for this uh, virus. So in short, uh, nagpa-admit ako sa hospital and uh, the fact na kaila- doon lang ako ilalagay doon sa walang mga uh, COVID patient. That's the first. So pumayag ako. However, uh, that night nung Sunday na yun, eh, sabi nila kaila- we, ha- we have to move you into the main building. So kung saan yung mga may COVID uh, patient mismo. Uh, so wala na akong magawa. It's just, ano na yon? Sabi ko, uh, God, tulungan mo lang ako. Ayaw kong, ayaw kong mapalala yung aking ano. But uh, I'd better choose this lad na kaysa naman mahawa ang family kong umuwi ako. So there, they put me in the COVID uh, patients area. So, pero doon sa mga mild 
nandun lang ako sa mild uh, category mm-hmm. kasi. And uh, that's uh, where I have my five day, longest five days in my life. No? Mm-hmm. Ang hirap. So sabi ko, Lord, uh, kung ano man yung suffering so ngayon, I offer it to you. Ikaw na po bahala. Sabi ko sa mm-hmm. kanya. Uh, from, kasi doon, no, bago nung mga, no, may mga papers kasi pinapipirman dyan. At pumirma mm-hmm. din ako ng tinatawag nilang comorbid. So, wala, kung whatever happens there, wala na, wala kang, wala nang ibang, ano, kung di, ang lalapitan mo lang is si God. So, I offer him yung at lahat. Sabi ko, ikaw na lang bahala. Jesus sa akin. So, but, you see, uh, yung, yung first two days ko doon, it's just like, uh, lagi ko ngayon, lagi kong dinadasal yun. Lagi naman ang pinatawagan ng family ko, but I never open the video call. It's just a phone. So, ayaw ko nilang makita yung ako mismo. Uh, okay, na sa, okay na yung makausap, gano'n. So, it's, uh, doon ko nakita yung ano, no, habang uh, yung pag-uusap ko sa God, yung na, na, nararamdaman ko na sabi ko, kaya ko to, kaya kong labanan. So, it, it uh, happened after Friday, the Friday of that week. Uh, may uh, attending physician just uh, uh, visited me and She, she told me the good news that I had to uh, discharge because I have already cleared. So oh. I told myself, uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You, you hear my prayer. So, uh, napaka, yung sabi nga ni Sir Eddie kanina, parang yung nanalo ko, parang pinasalamatan mo yung si, si Jesus. No? Uh, na nap, napakabait. Uh, ganon, ganon siya. So, In, yung topic na uh, binigay ni Sir Eddie, it's uh, very timing doon sa nangyari sa akin. Kasi yung pinangala, pinalangalagaan niya ako doon habang ako yung nag-iisa. Kasi mentally, spiritually, talagang down ka nan, habang nandoon. Tapos meron kang uh, sakit na gano'n. Mm-hmm. So, balik ako doon sa, ano, sa question niya. Does God care? Does God care when tragedy sweeps in unexpectedly? Parang nga doon sa video na pinakita ni Sir Eddie, uh, yung tatay, saka yung anak. So, although hindi sila nakakaintindihan, um, in, in spiritual, dahil doon sa pag uh, ng kanyang tatay na ano, gumaling, gumaling yung anak. So uh, hindi hindi ko na, hindi kumpleto para hindi kumpleto yung video pero at the end para yun yung nang maghawak kamay yung uh, <coughs> ano nagga-guide sa kanya yung tatay at sa kanya sa kanya naman. So yung question na does God care? So sabi ko dahil sa sarili kong experience uh, yes. the answer is yes. So no matter what happen, no matter what hap- we go through, ma- mabigat man o light lang Believe lang. Maniwala lang tayo sa Diyos. Trust Him. Dahil lagi siya na sa tabi natin. Sa atin lahat. Nagbibigay ng kanyang pagmamahal. Yung tinatawag natin na everlasting love. So, yes. uh, that's basically yung may share ko sa araw na to. And you, uh, amid this pandemic, let us be one. And uh, heal us one. God bless us all. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Um, thank you. Sige, Jelly, ko na ba? Sige, uh, just saying na uh, thank you, Sir Roger, for your openness. Uh, okay. For sharing your story, you know, with COVID-19. Yeah. So, uh, we're happy you're healthy, we're happy you're back, and yes. we're happy God has showed himself you. more to you, right? through your difficulty. Mm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Happy you're okay, sir. Do you have any comments, Freddy? No, no, beautiful. Yeah, I wanted to hear his story. Um, uh, we are blessed. Right. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. No, medyo, no, uh, first-hand uh, 
it's good to hear some first hand uh, sharing ng ano no experiences mo uh, during this pandemic and it's good that you and your family uh, is now okay uh, sana lahat ng nagiging victim ng ng covid is uh, parang similar sa iyo yung mangyari na no? that uh, uh, hindi mawala yung hope pagasa and at the end of the day we we'll get through with these uh, challenges yep okay and uh, for the next panelist uh, uh, it's uh, si Aldwin Ligarte no sir um, do you have uh, okay. something to share and uh, questions to sir Eddie about his talk hi hi good morning hi. Hi. Yes, yes. Hi, sir. Good morning. Yeah, sir, yeah. ano, uh, share ko lang na thank you dun sa talk mo. Kasi parang, for me, it was very timely. Um, alam naman natin, whatever we're going through with ngayon, lahat tayo nagka-question dun sa topic na kung God loves us, di ba? Sa akin, kasi growing up, I remember um, being in a Catholic family, tapos mm. being raised sa school din na I think from elementary hanggang college, nasa Catholic school ako eh. So, mm-hmm. we were taught na there's someone superior. Kasi sabi natin mm-hmm. na there's a God, there's a master. So, naniniwala ka doon. Um, sa akin lang kasi, um, hindi ko kailangan maka-experience ng ano eh, ng, ng, ng miracle or kailangan mm-hmm. ko ma-feel pa siya or makita pa siya just to believe. Mm-hmm. Yun yung tinuro sa, sa atin, yun ang pinaniniwalaan ko. So, um, knowing that, um, para sa akin yung makita ko lang yung family ko, yung, yung whatever is around us, yung mga problems na, na hinarap ko before, ang hinarap ko ngayon na, 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 na feel, feeling ko na overcome ko naman. Just, just by being here today, um, just by seeing what is around me, my family, mm. um, makes me believe na there's a God. Tapos, binalidate mo pa, sir, nung sinabi mo yung three, three, ano, three truths about God. Mm-mm. So, parang knowing that na He's sovereign, yung perfect, tapos God is good. Parang, I can, I can say na I can sleep tonight uh, mm. more peacefully na knowing na tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> na knowing na tomorrow, whatever He na ibigay niya sa akin tomorrow, um, alam ko, nakaplano hindi yun. naman niya bib- nakaplano siya na hindi niya bibigay yun ng hindi ko kakayanin. So, Uh-oh. kahit yung COVID, yung ginayari sa atin ngayon, parang, ge bring it on. <laughs> yes. Pag-ingat lang. <laughs> yes, sir. Yun lang po. First, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, Aldwin, no, for, for sharing. Um, actually, yan ay... Uh, it's good that you also mentioned yung yung belief no um we we were being taught that uh, we have a good relationship with with god no and yes true. uh true yung sinasabi mo kasi one of the key elements of having a good relationship whether to be a person or with god is trust or belief no if you don't have that it's really hard, hard to have a, a you know a good relationship and because that's a in, I know, you know the, the key ele- element uh, in having a, a good uh, relationship. So, again, uh, very relevant yung, ano, yung, yung uh, comment mo on this one. Um, our third and last uh, panelist is Ms. Uh, Fenella Corpus. Uh, Ma'am, uh, do you have something to share? Uh, reactions and uh, reflections? Uh, on Sir Ed's um, talk? Um, for me po, yung topic is very comforting, especially during these difficult times na maraming nangyayari sa mundo na nagkakos talaga ng suffering to a lot of people. So, mapapatanong ka talaga if God really cares. And sabi nga po ni Sir Eddie, he does. He just has his own ways of showing us that he cares and he loves us. And ang um, important lang po talaga is that we trust him because he has a plan for all of us. After all of this, meron siyang plan. And sabi nga po kanina, there, there's no problem bigger than God. So. Thank you, Fenella. Yeah. Galing. Thank you, Fenella. Yeah. Sabi nga nila, di ba? God moves in mysterious ways. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yes, uh, <laughs> plans. Anyway. So, uh, that would be it uh, from yeah, us, no? um, sir. Uh, Jello, do you have uh, something to add? 
Yeah. Uh, once again, you know, I'd like to uh, actually. I'm very surprised that uh, the sharings of our panelists are, you know, are not just your canned answers. And these answers were straight from the heart. And uh, I appreciate and thank you all for your openness and honesty. It's not mm-hmm. easy sharing these stories uh, in front of uh, in front of many people. But you know, uh, knowing that our stories or insights can inspire and help other people. Uh, thank you for being open. We have a comment here uh, from Miss. Uh, a comment here. It says, uh, "It is when it is when I suffer, when I feel closest to God, as He sits with oh. me through my pain and fills the emptiness in my heart." And that's very true. I agree. No, when you suffer, all the more we feel closer to the Lord. In fact, uh, I'd like to add very short lang no, na, Sir Roger and I belong in this not so exclusive club. <laughs> Memberships are rising in this club of ours. Uh, and I agree. That experience really taught me uh, what matters most. Diba? Family, relationships, our call to love, our call to serve. More than the many things we, we occupy ourselves with every day. Yes, career is important. Work is important. Our plans in our lives are important. But what happens when our plans don't don't happen accordingly? What if God has other plans for us? Diba? We're called to trust Him more. God loves us, therefore He knows what's best for us. Therefore, we must trust Him for better or for worse. Uh-huh. And that's one thing I that's in fact what spoke to me the most, you know, in Sir Eddie's talk. No matter what happens, God knows all. Since God knows all, therefore. All will be well. So once again, I'd like to thank our panelists, uh, Miss Ben, Roger, Sir Aldwin, Aldwin, my partner, Sir Alfie, did the job this morning. Of course, our speaker, Sir Eddie Mendoza, who took the time and the effort to really uh, bring this message across. And I'm sure our our audience right now uh, can really connect with that message. To remember, guys, everyone out there, pray, have faith, all will be well. So, uh, are there any other comments from our panelists, our speaker, or perhaps anyone else? Okay, good. Well, I hope for me, just want to add now. Uh, to be honest, this is my first time to attend <laughs> uh, this kind of talk. And it's really, ano, no, um, <laughs> nakakaluwag ng, ano, ng, ng pakiramdam to to hear something like what uh, Sir Eddie mentioned. No? It's, it validates our faith and kung may kulang pa ron, it really helps us uh, strengthen that. Very so, good. Yeah. Very good experience, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alfie. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So I think that uh, brings our Wellness Wednesday to a close. And I thank look you. forward to seeing all of you once again uh, this coming Friday for Forward Fridays. So I wish all of you uh, a wonderful day no? uh, and of course a grace-filled uh, day ahead. So thank you, Jarnas Dodge. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, speaker. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you, Jello. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jello. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a nice day. Bye.